Hey guys, it's Mackenzie. Welcome back to my channel. So today we have kind of a different, fun, interesting video in my opinion. This is going to show 35 items that I plan to take into Plato's closet to see if they want to purchase them from me. So as a full-time reseller, I do have a lot of pieces that just kind of fall through the cracks. They don't get listed, whether they have a small flaw or maybe I'm just not super motivated to list them myself. And they kind of all go into two different boxes, one for spring, summer, and one for fall, winter. So this is going to be a lot of my fall, winter box. I Before I take anything into Plato's Closet, I always call them on the phone and I ask them several questions just to kind of get in the right mindset. Actually, before I start sorting any of my items that I want to take in, I call them and I ask them, first off, what season are you guys primarily purchasing? Because even though we are in December, this video is going to go up pretty late, but this is a few days before Christmas. And so even though we are in winter time, they may have purchased a lot of winter stuff recently and are already, uh, you know, kind of like backlogged on winter stuff and want to start looking at spring stuff. I didn't really know. So yeah, that's really important. But she said that they are definitely still looking at winter stuff. I also asked her specifically what type of clothing they are looking for, athletic wear, sweaters, that kind of thing. And she said sweaters, as well as outerwear, booties, boots. And so, yeah, that also helped me kind of narrow down some items that fit the bill. I also asked her how many bags or totes, like storage totes, are you allowed to bring in? And she said two, which is also very good information. I have brought in three or four before and they have said you can only bring in two. So you don't want to be caught off guard like that. And lastly, I did ask what time would be best for me to bring them in and she said at opening 10 a.m. So with all of that knowledge going into it, I assembled two large Ikea bags full of 35 items to take in. Just a couple tips. I do put my best stuff on top because in my experience, it gets the buyer excited. They, their first impression is good. They think, okay, this is going to be two bags full of good items that we will want to purchase. It's just a positive first impression. And I do also steam and lint roll anything that needs to look more presentable because like I said, a lot of the stuff has been sitting in boxes. And so, yeah, I do, again, just want to give a good first impression. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the items. I will put on screen as I'm showing them what they took and what they did not take. My expectations are not super high right now because we are on winter break. And so I think there's a lot of people with a lot of free time right now, younger people that are probably cleaning out their closets and are taking stuff in for Plato's closet to buy. So I think I have a lot of competition, but we will see how it goes. If they do offer me any amount of significant or any significant amount of money, I will either try to reinvest that at the Plato's closet store and show you guys what I buy at the end of this video or what I did last time is I took the money that they offered me to the Goodwill outlet and I found a ton of stuff and it was a really good thing. I will link that video down below the last time that I did this because that was really fun. So yes, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Our first, this is a two piece set. So our first little bundle here is this Michael Kors knit scarf with a fringe trim. And it is new with tags. It was sold through Macy's. The scarf was $68. And I don't think, yeah, it's just 100% acrylic. And it also has a matching beanie that is new with tags, cable knit. So this I will definitely lint roll. The beanie retailed at $42. So yeah, this was like over a $100 set. So I'm hoping they take that. If not, I could easily list that. But again, I'm just not super motivated to get that listed. Next, we have a Columbia jacket. It has a fun print to it. It zips down all the way in front and it has zippered pockets, drawstring at the bottom hem. 
So this is one of those jackets where you can zip in a fleece lining, but I don't have that. It's an interchangeable jacket. And I just don't love listing like winter coats and stuff. So I'm thinking they'll take that because it is pretty nice. Same for this one. I mainly just don't really like listing this brand, Aeropostale. Aeropostale. <laughs> it will focus. It's definitely more of a junior's brand, so I think this will be great for Plato's Closet. But it is a size extra large, which is excellent. And it's really cute. It's in great shape. It's a maroon color with a faux fur collar and then hood. So yeah, it's in really good condition. I do always look at the wrist cuffs on jackets like that to determine what kind of condition they're in. Okay, next we have just a basic gray chunky knit turtleneck sweater. I do like this, but I think it would be kind of hard to list because it has no brand tag and it's pretty plain, but I think if you saw this in real life, it would be easier to sell just because it feels really nice. The cut is really cute and it's just one of those things I don't think would photo that well. It is 20% wool, so we'll see if they snag that. This is one of the pieces that I do need to lint, or sorry, steam. This is an older Reformation dress. It is pretty wrinkled, but you can get the idea. It's a midi or maxi length dress. And this has a couple just like pinpoint spots that, again, make me not super excited to list it, but it is really pretty. It's lined to about the knee, so we'll see if they take this. I know that they do like Reformation. Another tip is before you take anything in to sell to the Plato's Closet, you do wanna go to that specific location beforehand and just kind of scope out what brands they have. I feel like each location is different with what they buy and how they stock their stores. I can go 20 miles away from one location and it's totally different. A lot of like Western wear, miss me kind of stuff. But the one that I go to, they do seem to take, I would say like mid-tier brands like Reformation, Everlane, that kind of thing. They're more brand savvy, I guess you'd say. So yeah, that is very important, knowing what brands they prioritize and styles and all that. Okay, next we have a Nike dry fit pullover. They do really like athletic wear and this is a great colder weather piece. It's a size medium, it's in really good condition. I don't love listing stuff like that just because, you know, it's kind of boring. It's very practical, but just kind of boring. Next, we have a New Attacks Boohoo size 10 leopard printed full length long sleeve romper. My best friend actually gave me this. I think she ordered it and didn't like it. So she was like, do you want to do something with this? So yeah, I just threw it in that box. And I think it's really cute for winter with maybe like a black wool hat and some booties. Okay, next, this was from a clothing buyout I did a long time ago. And I did actually sell a couple sweatpants from this brand and they sold really well, OGL. I hadn't heard of it, but they are known for this like double waistband thing. And it's a pretty solid seller, I would say for around $30. The only reason I didn't list this particular pair was because it does have just a little bit of wash wear in back. So yeah, we'll see. It's not too bad, really. I think they still might get those. Next is New Attacks Dolce Vita. This I got in a thread up uh, rescue bulk clothing lot box, mystery box. And I really just don't sell Dolce Vita clothing ever. I only sell the shoes. So I just threw this in the box. We'll see if they take it. It is a nice winter dress with the long sleeves and it's new tags. So that's good. These are a pair of Ann Taylor size four faux leather pants. They are a cropped wide leg high rise 
trouser pants. Very nice, very contemporary, minimalist, that whole vibe. They, let's see what year these are from. These are from 2020. The reason I didn't list these is because they do have, they're missing like a one inch section of stitching, but it really isn't like a problem. I just don't personally want to list them with that flaw because I prefer stuff in my closet to be as close to flawless as possible. If those had been like a higher tier brand with a small flaw like that, I probably would list them, but with them just being a mall brand and tailor, I am just going to take them in. Next, we have a pair of Lululemon flare leg pants. Same kind of thing with these. I would totally list these myself, but they do have some pilling here in back. It's really not super major, but uh, you know, it's just something that I don't really want to deal with. They have the, is that like camo up top? And these were a good size. I remember, I think they're like a size 10 or, yeah, they're size 10. They're a little bit older, but the whole flare leg yoga pants thing has been really trendy the last couple years. Next, we have a 100% silk Vince shirt dress, v-neck shirt dress with a grid print to it. That is the newer tag from Vince. This just has some fading to it. And it might have a couple like runs in the silk. Again, it's not super noticeable. Anything that has small flaws, I just feel like it would sell better in person because you can kind of see the flaws, assess them, figure out how much of a deal they are to you versus online. It's kind of hard to just read about them and try to hope that, you know, they're not anything major. Okay, next, I want to say, oh, this was actually from a mystery box from Courtney, who is Magnolia Thrifts here on YouTube. It's a Gianni Beanie New Tags dress. It originally retailed for $109. Again, this is a nice winter piece because it's velvet. It's really pretty off-shoulder velvet midi dress. More of an evening cocktail kind of look. I personally just don't really sell this brand, Gianni Bini, so that's why I'm taking that in. These pants, J-O-A, I actually had these listed and they did sell on my Poshmark closet, but I had to cancel the sale because they have just the tiniest stitching issue in back. It's really not a big deal, but I didn't disclose it, and so I did cancel that sale and throw them in the box. They're a wide leg, crinkled texture, navy pant with a waist tie. Really cute, I think they'll probably take these, but sometimes I'm very surprised by what they accept and what they don't accept. Okay, next we have Athleta, large petite, another one of their newer tags. This is a long sleeve crossover or tulip hem. Uh, kind of sweater top. It's so soft. What is this made of? I can't remember why I threw this in the box a very long time ago. 88% modal, so that's why. Modal is like the softest material ever. Yeah, I'm really not sure why I didn't list this myself because I'm not seeing maybe just like the tiniest amount of wash wear. This could have had a small spot, but I'm not seeing it. So yeah, I think they'll probably take that they do really like athleisure and athletic stuff. Zara, newer tag, size small. I think I picked this up at the bins purposely to take to Plato's Closet just because it's lightweight but very trendy. It has a puff sleeve with a banded wrist and a leopard print. Really cute. Looks very flattering. Okay, kind of like I was just mentioning, the whole athleisure, loungewear kind of thing they like. Newer tag, American Eagle, size small, ribbed, knit, high rise, flare, legging pant. I actually picked these up for myself at the bins, but I just didn't love the fit on them. They weren't comfy enough for me to lounge in, and my loungewear, I like it to be extremely comfortable. So yeah, again, these were just tossed into the box. 
I'm thinking they'll take those. Next we have a bodysuit from Abercrombie and Fitch. This is one of those brands that people are really searching for and I do love selling their denim. Their denim sells phenomenally for me. I haven't really tried their bodysuits, but I would rather just take this to Plato's Closet because it is a less substantial piece than denim. So um, yeah, I would rather just kind of get it off quickly and reinvest the money into something else. I believe I also got that in a mystery box. Next we have a pair of Zara size large trouser pants, high rise, wide, full length leg. These, I want to say, I think they just had some pilling at the bottom hem, but on the inside, like the inside lining has a little bit of pilling. So it's really nothing major. I could honestly list these myself if they reject them. Next we have Urban Outfitters, newer tag, size medium. Same kind of thing, a pull on high rise flare leg pant with this fun wavy design. These are very trendy. I'm thinking they'll take these. I want to say I got these in a mystery box where Courtney Magnolia Thrifts shopped at Plato's Closet. So they could possibly go right back to the store. Newer tag Zara reptile printed mini skirt. It's like a satin mini skirt. This does have, have belt loops. I would have listed this myself if it had an attached belt. I think that would make it a little bit more substantial, but with it just being like a lightweight mini skirt like that, I would rather take it in. In the past, I think they've offered me around $4 per item on average, and I'm happy with that for this stuff because, you know, $4 per item, I can take that and reinvest it into inventory that I'm super excited to list. And I'm probably, I'm most definitely making a profit on most all of these items because I primarily shop at the bins. My cost of goods is no more than $2.50 there. So yeah, making a small profit and reinvesting. Okay, up next we have more Zara. This is a button down shirt dress. I picked this up at the Austin Goodwill outlet a couple months ago, mainly because I thought the cut was so interesting. Very contemporary, artsy, minimalist, that whole thing especially with this pinstriped print. I thought I could add a lot of keywords into this. However, it did have a few just small spots to it that I, I can't remember. I think I did try to get them out and they didn't come out, but they're really not too noticeable with this busy print. So again, that's something that I think would be better to see in real life and see how much of a deal breaker those flaws are for you with purchasing the item. And again, with this just being a mall brand, I would rather just take it to Plato's Closet. Okay, next we have some shoes that I'll take in. Again, all very wintry shoes. First off are these Doc Martens. They're like a maroon color and they do definitely have some wear especially at the toes there, but I mean, these these shoes last forever, so a lot of life left. I actually got these from my assistant. I did pay her something for them, but I forget what it was. I wanna say they're like a size seven, yeah. So yeah, we'll see if they take those. Again, I just don't really wanna list them because of the wear to them. These are Franco Sardo perforated suede peep toe sandal boots, booties. Some people call these shooties. They have a stacked heel and back. I don't know why eight and a half. I'm not sure why I had these in the box. They look like they're in pretty good condition. Franco Sardo does tend to sit for me. So maybe that was why. I also don't love selling that style of shoe, the peep toe heeled. Oh, you know what? I think maybe it was because it did have some color transfer around the opening. I'm not sure. There could be a couple reasons, but either way, I would be happy for them to take those. 
a new day, croc, embossed, almond toe, slip on, mule. This is just from Target, size eight. We'll see if they take those. Lucky brand, booties with a zipper opening. Kind of cool, kind of edgy. These have some damage to the leather and back. Nothing major. Again, not super sure why I have these in the box. Size nine. They might have some wear that I'm not seeing right now. But yeah, I would love, again, to just get those out the door. And I think our last pair of shoes is also Lucky Brand. I've sold these a couple times in the past. They are called the Cahill Little Loafers. Yeah, Cahill, size 8, leather upper and leather, leather upper man-made lining. And they're in a nice neutral tan color. They do have just some scuffing. It looks like I tried to get that out, but it didn't work all that well. But otherwise, they're in good condition. So I'm thinking they might take those. Okay, back to clothing. We're almost done here. We have a Tibby dress. This is newer tag Tibby. I did try to list this myself, but I washed it on cold because I think it had some surface dirt to it and it ended up getting super faded in the wash. And so I didn't want to list it for that reason. But I mean, you know, a lot of brands manufacture clothing with it intentionally looking faded. So I think someone could honestly like this, especially with the cut of the dress. It kind of has like a suspenders look with all the straps. These are like faux leather accents. And it has, it's actually a really cute dress. So yeah, it is maxi length, a lot of fabric happening. There's a ruffle towards the bottom hem. And then you have these oversized pockets in back, which is kind of quirky. So yeah, we'll see if they take that. It's a size, I want to say it's a size large. Oh, you know what? I think the size was cut out of this dress, which they may not take it for that reason. So maybe I should just, uh, I'll, I'll keep it in, but I don't think they'll take that because the size was cut out. Next we have Ellie Tahari size extra large sweater, chunky knit sweater with a rounded V-neck. Uh, very soft, it's long line. This just has, it has staining, but it's not like concentrated staining, if that makes sense. It's over like large areas and it's just like minor discoloration. So you really don't notice it unless you like really hold it up to the light and examine it. I think, you know, for wearing it, like it's really not a big deal. And with it being a size extra large, it's 50% wool, 50% cashmere. So I hate to just redonate this. More Gianni Beanie, and this is new with tags. Size large, it retailed at $59. It is a leopard printed true wrap dress, long sleeve, and it has ruffles going all the way down the front as well as the bottom hem. So again, Gianni Beanie is just not really a brand that I sell in my Poshmark closet. Newer Tag Zara, size eight, reptile printed, high rise, skinny jeans with a frayed ankle. Not super substantial. I don't love selling printed denim. It just tends to sit for me. And with them being Zara, it's just a mall brand. If those had been a higher tier designer and printed denim, I would list them, but um, just with what they have going for them, I would rather take them in. Next, we have J. Crew size extra large cable knit sweater. This I picked up from the bins with the intent to list in my closet, but it does have just some minor pulls, like all throughout the front. I usually fix pulls, like they're usually not a big deal, but these are so tiny and just all over that it would take me so long. I would rather just save the time. That's what's so great about this is you 
save time by not having to mend something or stain treat something. Just get that, you know, make a tiny profit on it, reinvest it, and save your time because time is money. Okay, next up we have Rebecca Taylor, size 8, mixed media blouse. So the front and back panels are 100% silk, and then the sleeves and back bottom hem are a really soft rayon. This is just kind of dated. It is the older tag, Rebecca Taylor, and it does have some staining towards the bottom hem. So I don't, I'm thinking they probably won't take that. Down to our final three items here. We have Hollister Ultra High Rise Dad Jean in a size 28. I mentioned earlier that Abercrombie and Fitch denim sells really well for me. I haven't really experimented with Hollister. I did look up comps on these. I think I just uh, threw these into my cart at the bins and didn't run comps there. I just figured they might sell for around what Abercrombie jeans sell for. But after I did look at comps, I realized that they do not. It seems that Hollister jeans do have a lower resale value for sure. I think just because it's more of like a jewelry type brand. People my age, I'm almost 30, tend to shop at Abercrombie more than Hollister kind of thing. So anyways, yeah, with Plato's Closet being very junior focused, I think they might take those. Next we have New Attacks Princess Polly biker shorts in a zebra print. So kind of like I was saying earlier, they do like loungewear, athleisure stuff. So we'll see if they take these size six. And lastly, New Attacks Express skirt in a size medium. Express is just another one of those brands that I don't really sell myself unless it's like a career wear piece, a very substantial career wear, career wear piece that's like New Attacks or has a lot going for it. But this high-low skirt is kind of dated and I don't love the print. So yeah, I will take this in. They might take it with it being new. And yeah, that's absolutely everything that I will be taking in. Again, I will be sure to get there at 10 a.m. I will report back to you guys on what they offered me and also possibly show you anything that I purchased either at Plato's Closet or at the Goodwill Outlet where I reinvested the money. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, it has been several days since I filmed the first part to this video. I have since gone to Plato's Closet. I actually went to two different Plato's Closets to sell my 36 items. And I have all my numbers here on my phone written down. And then I have all the items that I reinvested the profit from Plato's Closet into, which I will show you towards the end of this video. So getting into the numbers, the first Plato's Closet purchased 12 items from me for a total of $60.47. So they paid me out on average $5.04 per item. I got there right at 10 a.m. They took maybe 10 minutes to look through everything. It was a seamless process. I was very happy with it. And then Plato's Closet number two, I went the same day around 2.30 p.m. I took everything that the first store rejected. They purchased 11 items from me for $44.86. So on average, they paid me $4.08 per item. And again, very seamless process, problem free. I was super happy with that. Um, I did not differentiate in the first part when I was editing and typing in which items were accepted. I didn't differentiate which store took which, like which were accepted by the first one and then what was left over and sold or taken by the second one. But I can write that out in a pinned comment down below if you guys are curious to know what was purchased first. So I, in total, sold 23 items to both stores and was paid out $105 with 33 cents, making my average payment $4.58 per item, which honestly I was thrilled with. I purchased almost all of those pieces from the Goodwill outlet where I pay $1.50 to $2 per item. And so I made a small profit on each piece and I was able to offload 
inventory that I was not motivated to list myself for one reason or another. Maybe it had stains, flaws, you guys saw in the first part. So yeah, I was thrilled with it. I, it exceeded my expectations. I was not expecting to make back over $100. And so my initial plan was to take that profit and or take that amount and go to the Goodwill outlet and find items to reinvest to try to maximize my profits. However, it would take me a very long time and a lot of items to spend $105 at the Goodwill outlet. And I did want to keep this all one video. So I ended up going to a regularly priced Goodwill store to try and find a smaller amount of items that I would pay up a little bit for, but would sell for higher. And so I would be able to work a little bit smarter and not harder. And I actually found a solid 13 items that I am so happy with. I only shopped for about an hour and you know, usually when I go to the outlet, I shop for four to five hours. So yeah, I was thrilled to be able to reinvest into 13 solid items. And I actually ended up paying $105.66 for everything from Goodwill. And so out of pocket, I essentially paid 33 cents for these 13 items once you apply what Plato's Closet paid me. And so I just could not be happier. I didn't really plan it like that. I went to the Goodwill and I just found as many items as I could that I wanted to buy. And then when I got up to the checkout, I was just, it worked out so perfectly. So our first piece is this newer tag Zara floral printed dress. And it has puff sleeves, really pretty. This is maxi length. It's like a sweater knit. I love this, a very substantial piece from Zara. This probably retailed for around $100. I really didn't see too many of these listed, like this exact style listed on Poshmark. So it's not oversaturated, which is an excellent thing. I think that will end up selling for, I would say $50 to $75 if I had to guess. That was priced at $17 at Goodwill. It was priced up. It was the only item that was uh, priced higher than the others. This skirt, skirts were $5 each. This is Talbot's in a size 16. That was one reason I wanted to get it. It's plus size. This is also a newer item. I believe it is still selling on the website. It's a midi length. It has this really fun pastel paisley print to it, fully lined. It looks brand new. One person very clearly donated their Talbot's J. Jill Garnet Hill collection, and I was just able to find all of it and load up, which I was so happy about. It made things very easy for me. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe 30, 35 ish on that. This is Bowden in a size 16 slash 18 regular. Just a classic closet staple. This will sell so well. It's in a really soft, stretchy jersey knit material. The sleeves have elastic at the wrist. This is called the Easy Jersey Dress, something like that. And it is Bowdoin's newer tag. So this should sell phenomenally. It really has no signs of wear, no fading, no pilling whatsoever. It looks really flattering. Uh, that was $8.00. That is what Goodwill prices their dresses for. This is newer tag Vince. This was the only piece that was their color of the day. So this was half price. Blouses are typically $6. So this was three. I picked it up because it is a newer tag. It's 100% silk and it had no flaws. This is also a newer item from the brand. It was still selling on Neiman Marcus, I believe, when I looked up comps. It has a V-neck and then this really pretty, interesting back. It's like ruched or shirred, I guess you'd say. This was exciting. It's Garnet Hill, again, from the same donation, size 14, 100% linen, maxi length, striped print dress with pockets at the hips, and side vents. This is so nice. I just know that this will sell 
I would say 35 to $45 at least with the condition and style and just overall vibe to this. I can add in keywords like lag and look, minimalist, contemporary, boho, artsy even. Next we have more Talbots and this is actually new with tags and they didn't price this up somehow. This was still just $8 or regular dress price. However, it retailed at Talbots for 109. It's a size extra large and it's this fun floral print. This is also another newer piece. It was still selling on Talbots website. A little keyhole opening in front really soft and stretchy maxi length. So yeah, this I'm guessing probably 35, maybe 45 ish more Bowden. I love this in a size 14 regular. And again, this is their newer tag Paisley printed maxi length skirt in a crinkle material. So this is great for travel because the material already has like a texture to it. So it's hard to like wrinkle and look unpresentable, I guess you'd say. Really comfy, elastic waist. I love this. I think this will go probably $50 if I had to guess. Excellent condition. It's all in excellent condition or new with tags. That skirt, again, skirts were $5. Same for this, they didn't mark this one up, even though it is new with tags from Talbots once again. Retailed at 109, but it was marked down to 80. Size extra large. This is a striped midi length skirt with a tie waist, really pretty. It is fully lined, it has pockets, and it is all natural. It feels very breathable, very, yeah, 60% linen, 40% cotton, and then lining is cotton. So yeah, coastal grandma, beachy, minimalist, contemporary, lag and look with it being linen, nautical. I think this will go 40 to 50-ish, maybe 35 to 50-ish. Okay, switching it up a little bit, I found this Johnny Was. It's from their 3J Workshop line within Johnny Was, which is an older line. This is a piece that's probably from the early 2000s or maybe mid 2000s. So I will be adding Y2K into the listing as keywords. It has all this fun embroidery. It says Stairway to Heaven at the back collar and then really pretty floral embroidery. You have a fun little bird here. So yeah, I love this. It does have a couple faint spots, but those did not deter me from getting this. I think it will still sell incredibly well. Johnny Was has such a following. And I think these 3J Workshop tops are kind of hard to find now because they are older. Like I don't think the brand sells these anymore. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe like 35 to 45 ish on that. This was a really nice piece. It is newer tag Athleta, size small. It's a maxi length athleisure style, like sweat wicking material maxi dress with a flattering tie waist. This was flawless. I looked it over. I've already steamed and photoed all of these items and I found no flaws on any of them except for the Johnny Was, which I already knew about in store. So yeah, I was just thrilled to reinvest into some really substantial high quality name brand items that I know are trending and I can add really good keywords into. I think they will sell quickly. And like I said, there are fewer items here than if I went to the bins, but they are going to sell for more and so you know that's less energy output by not having to list so much next we have nbd which this is a pretty good brand it's sold on revolve these retail for 188 dollars definitely a trendier brand um there these are called the oliver pant 
and they have these straps that kind of sit on your hips. So definitely kind of flirty, romantic vibe. These would be really cute for like date night or with just like a white cropped t-shirt and some heels. They have a split bottom hem. Really cool, interesting pant. I wanted to get them with this unique waistline. They're a size large. They look brand new. And yeah, with them retailing at 188 combined with the uh, demand for this brand, NBD, people do know it and search it out. I would guess those would go for around 35 to 50 ish. Another great, really substantial piece here, Abercrombie and Fitch, which is once again, a brand that has just really been trending recently. Size large. It is pretty pricey retail, especially for items like this. It is a maxi length printed poplin dress. So lovely. I added keywords into this like engagement party, uh, wedding guest. Well, maybe not wedding guest because it is white, but I think if it's printed, it's okay. Right. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Like if, if the body of the dress is cream or white, would you not wear it to a wedding? I probably wouldn't to be on the safe side, but I think some people do. Anyways, um, I also added like garden party, barbecue, outdoors, summer, that kind of thing. It has a cut out and back with a tie. Really pretty. I'm sure this retailed at Abercrombie for like 150. And I think this was a more popular piece because this exact style of dress, I did not see any in this print and this size currently selling on Poshmark. So that always helps out when you're trying to stay firm on your price. And lastly, we have a, another Talbot's piece. I grabbed this because it was a size extra large. It's 100% linen and it looks brand new. This looks unworn. I like the oversized kind of bo boxy bodice to this kind of nautical preppy. So yeah, 100% linen from 2022. So again, a little bit of a newer piece. So yeah, that's everything that I reinvested my Plato's Closet profits into. Um, I'm very curious to hear y'all's thoughts. Do you think that it was worth it to go to Plato's Closet? Do you think this was the right move reinvesting into regular Goodwill? You know, of course I could have taken that hundred dollars, gone to the bins, got, you know, 35, 40 items for that amount. They probably would have been a little bit more bread and butter. So again, would have taken me longer to list. I think this was a pretty good route to go because I took one afternoon and got all of this steamed and listed and I'm expecting to make back, I would say maybe like three to $400 from this stuff is the ballpark that I kind of figured. So yeah, I essentially turned two Ikea bags of inventory that I was basically ready to donate into three to $400 in potential profit. So I am thrilled with that. Again, I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I know this was a little bit of a switch up in content. I'm also curious to hear what you guys think about that. Do you like when I deviate from my typical content, thrift hauls, ship with me's, or would you rather just see my normal everyday content? I'm very curious to hear the feedback on that. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please feel free to leave me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys soon. Bye y'all.